this uh, lecture video will be discussing of uh, designing an inverter uh, first we shall write a uh, verilog code for inverter you know what is inverter inverter is a circuit which provides inversion of your input that means if you give a logic 0 your output will be logic 1 and if you give uh, input as 1 you will get an uh, output as 0 so it is just inversion of your input so we have already studied uh, how to write a uh, code using uh, Verilog in your fifth sum. So here just uh, using those Verilog, uh, using that Verilog will be uh, designing an inverter. So any program should be started with uh, a module and it should be ended with end module. So all the keywords what we are making use of uh, such as module, input, output, assign, end module. All these things uh, should be in the lower case. All these things should be in lower case. Uh, if you put a uh, higher case or uh, capital letters, then it might it might not uh, consider it as uh, a keyword. So any program starts with a module followed with a module name and followed with uh, a port list. So here uh, module name what. I have given uh, uh, here as inverter. I have given module name as inverter, and uh, the port list is the inputs and outputs that uh, we are making use of. Here uh, we, I have given A as input and B as output. So I am assigning B with not of A. In Verilog, we are uh, defining AND gate or gate using symbols. So that symbol here uh, not is represented by this particular symbol. So B is assigned with not of A. It is a continuous assignment statement. That means whenever uh, the value of input changes immediately it uh, assigns, it will calculate and it will uh, assign it to the uh, output. So once this is done, it will be writing end module. Okay. This is the program for inverter. And uh, coming to test bench. In test bench, uh, all the inputs will be declared as registers. Output should be declared as wire. Uh, in the next uh, step, we'll be instantiating this particular uh, inverter as a component, as a component into the test bench. We have instantiated the inverter as a component in the test bench, and then. In the third step, we will be applying the various input at different time slots. At different time slots. So, this is how we write a test bench. So, for test bench, I have given, uh, it, is, it should also start with a keyword module, end with end module. So, for test bench, I have given the name as inv underscore tb. Module name as inv underscore tb. You can give any name here. We can give a uh, module test or uh, module uh, uh, design under test anything or whatever name you want you can give it but there is uh, the constraint that it should start with an alphabet or an underscore it should not contain any special characters okay uh, as i told input should be declared as uh, register and output should be declared as so B is uh, the output what we have declared here as B as output so that we have declared as wire in your test bench we have made use of A as input here we have declared it as uh, register A the second step is instantiating the component so I have taken the component inverter is our component so I have instantiated inverter here I have given some name that is I1 for that particular component and then I am port mapping it or uh, connecting the ports. So here we have connected the ports by order. By order in the sense here first I have declared B and then A. In the same order I will connect here also. B is connected to B, A is connected to A. And then the third step we have to apply various inputs. So this is initial block, this initial uh, is a procedural block which executes only once. So uh, initial should be followed with begin. If you are uh, declaring only one statement, 
then begin and end is not required but when we have multiple statements here these are the multiple statements so when we have multiple statements we should use begin and end inside this procedural block so initial begin i have specified a is equal to 0 initial initial value of a to be 0 at uh, time 0 and after 10 time unit i have changed the value of a to 1 and again after 10 time unit i'll change the value of a to x and uh, again after 10 time unit i'll change the value of a to z okay we are applying uh, inputs at different time slots or we can tell at uh, 0 time unit a value is 0 at 10 time unit a value is 1 at 20 time unit a value is x at uh, 30 time unit a value is z so i am applying uh, inputs at uh, various time slots so this time uh, time is not fixed you can give any time you can give uh, 20 30 60 whatever time you want so it is not fixed one okay once we execute we get a waveform in this manner we get a waveform in this manner here when you apply 0 your output is 1 when it is 1 it is uh, 0 when your input is x output is also unknown x when your input is z high impedance your output is unknown that is z so this is the output what you get once you run your uh, test bench so how to perform that execution we shall see here so first we have to go for project navigator so it can be 64 bit project navigator you can go for search uh, you will get this project navigator You click on OK and then go for File, New Project. Here it will ask for the project name. You can give any name, you can give your name also. Here uh, I'll give uh, Verilog underscore HDL underscore lab. So source type it should be HDL and then click on next. Here it will ask uh, in which location we have to store all the programs which you have uh, designed. So here I have given uh, location F. So in location F it creates a folder with the name uh, Verilog HDL lab. So next will be this one here uh, top level source code is HDL synthesis tool we are making use of a Xilinx synthesis tool that is a uh, XST which synthesizes both VHDL and Verilog we are uh, making use of iSIM simulator for performing timing verification of your uh, design next uh, the preferred uh, language which we want to write a code or design so here we have two types one is VHDL and Verilog uh, anyhow we are designing with Verilog we shall keep it as uh, Verilog so this at the end VHDL 93 it is uh, the standard it is 93 standard and this will be VHDL uh, 2000 standard so whichever you want you can specify this is for VHDL program not for Verilog and uh, at the top you can see uh, the family there are different uh, FPGA kits available 
uh, for defense grade we use uh, vertex so this will be having a high power and this low power each uh, FPGA will be having a different capability uh, in terms of speed size power consumption all those things and uh, there are different uh, chip designers available that, such as uh, Vertex, Intex, Hard 10, all these things. So here uh, we have uh, used Spartan. So when you choose this particular family, so that particular uh, family uh, synthesis tool will synthesize your code which is suitable for that family uh, ICs. So and uh, this Spartan 3E, uh, I have chosen the different uh, ICs available. This is 100 kilo gates, 250 kilo gates, 500 kilo gates, 1200, 1600 kilo gates. So the different uh, gate capacity is available. And uh, package type, it has 208 pins. This uh, 256, 144, this indicates the pins. So here uh, Spartan 3 has 208 pins and it is plastic package. So it is PQ 208 and this gives a uh, speed grade. So don't change anything in this. Just uh, go for next and then finish. Once you finish it will be here you can see it will be in implementation. So here it will create a folder with the name Verilog HDL and uh, below that you can see xe 3s 250e that is uh, the ic version what uh, we are making use of that is spartan ic uh, and it has 250 kilo gates and it is plastic package and uh, with the 208 pins so right click on this particular ic you can find new source click on new source here uh, there are different uh, types available so we are not making use of all these types. We shall discuss all the uh, different types uh, in some other classes. Here we will directly go for Verilog module. So which program you want to design that is inverter. You can give module name here. I have uh, told right module module name. So module name there we had given inverter. So first we have to choose Verilog module. Here you can give module name. I have given inverter. Same thing I'll give here. You can give any name. Keep in mind. It is not that you have to give inverter only. You can give any name. Once this is done, click on next. Here it will ask for inputs and outputs. We have uh, one input and one output. So input is A. Uh, output is B. So direction you have to give it as output. Okay. If it is uh, multi-bits or if it is a vector, then we have to specify that here in MSB and LSB column. Click on next and then finish. So now we have uh, declared uh, inputs, outputs, all those things. And the next step is assign. Here I have given assign b is equal to not of a end module. So here right click on this, make it as set as top uh, module. If it is not there, you have to make this set as top module. It is already in the top module. So directly click on this, go for synthesize. Okay. So once it is uh, synthesized, it will show a green tick on the synthesis or uh, the synthesis, it will show a green tick. Uh, in design summary, you can see how many devices has been used and what are, how many devices are available. Its utilization, everything can be shown, it will be showing here. Uh, that is uh, not required for time being. If you want RTL schematic. Register transfer schematic on this particular uh, program, 
you can right click on this uh, register transfer level and you can run it so it will show the register transfer level this is the inverter what it has designed with output p and input as a so it makes use of uh, the technology files for uh, available technologies uh, for designing this so once it is done you can go for uh, simulation and uh, choose this run your icm simulator you can run this icm simulator if you expand this we will get behavioral check and uh, simulate behavioral model so here we will be running this particular module so here uh, initial value of uh, the output is unknown and uh, input is high impedance you can change by doing force constant when you go for force constant it will ask for the value force to value I will give here as 0, apply and OK and uh, then you can uh, run it. So when you run your output is 1, when your input is 0. When you have run, uh, when you apply input as 0, you are getting output as 1. Similarly, go for force constant, uh, value will be 1. When you apply value 1, you can run this, the output will become 0. Similarly, if you want to run with the value of x, I can give x here, apply. And if you run, you can see both input and output are x. When input is uh, high impedance set, your output will be still unknown. So input is high impedance but output is unknown. Now we shall write a test bench for this particular. So to write a test bench you go for implementation. You select this particular design whatever you have made. Uh, right click on this. Go for new source. And uh, here you can see Verilog test fixture. So Verilog test fixture is a place where we write a test bench for that. Here I will give INV underscore AB for writing a test bench. So you have to go for Verilog test fixture, give uh, the module name, here uh, I have given INV underscore AB. So it will, it will ask which, for which program you are writing a test bench. So I have selected inverter. So automatically this inverter will be taken as a component into your test bench. So here we can see uh, module inverter underscore TB here input is uh, declared as register output will be declared as wire and automatically it has taken uh, uh, the inverter as a component and then it has port mapped. This type of port mapping we call it as uh, port mapping uh, by name, mapping by name. So here dot b and dot a. This is indicates port mapping by name. You can uh, connect or port map in any order. When you go for port mapping by name, uh, by order, uh, by name, you can connect this in any order. First you can declare uh, input and uh, then you can declare the output or in any uh, fashion but when you go for uh, port mapping through order at that time it should follow this particular uh, port mapping style if you have declared output first in the test bench also you have to declare output first if you have declared input first then you have to declare input here so after this initial begin will give uh, inputs at different uh, time slots here and then we will give uh, end module once you write uh, once you apply the inputs at different time slots you can uh, go for saving it and then click on simulation here you can see the test bench whatever test bench you have written 
which is with the name inverter underscore tb that will be available here we just go for behavioral syntax to check whether uh, the syntax what we have given here is correct if it is correct it will put a tick mark on this if it is uh, wrong if there is any error say i'll remove this and then if i check for syntax it will be showing the error line 50 there is an error the end because I have not ended this at line 45 it will be showing error at the 50 because there is no end so it will be in the form of continuation so if I put here even colon you can clear that particular error so we will get a tick mark now if you directly uh, run the simulation you will get the waveform no need to apply different inputs for that so we can go for uh, zoom to full view and click here so you can see the variation here so when it, your input is uh, 0 your output is 1 when it is 1 it is 0 when it is x, your output is x. When it, your uh, input is high impedance, your output is x. This is how we write a test bench. This is how we write a test bench and execute it. While execution, keep in mind you have to go for simulation and then simulate your behavioral code which you have written for test bench. Okay, this completes. Uh, first experiment we shall go with uh, the second one that is uh, buffer thank you